I just wanted to ask of related follow-up to freshman congressman. You're yeah. being replaced, obviously, by the new freshman congressman, Keith Ellison. And I just wanted to know what you thought about him or the legacy that you've left or the connection to that, and also the controversy that's been caused sort of by him being the first Muslim to be elected to Congress. What are some of your thoughts on that? Oh, that adds, you know, I think a heavier burden on him. Some folks want to be a theologian as well as a politician. I think that's putting a little heavy burden on anyone. Good question. Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Michael Harold, and I um, go to American University. I'm a senior this year. And my question is sort of more of a reflection on the institution at large. And um, you were, you know, f first elected into office at the state level when you were 22 years old. Right. Uh, served for 18 years. You were elected to the federal government in 1978. Um, so at this point in your career, how much do polls matter to you? Um, when it comes time to vote on an important piece of legislation, do you vote by the numbers or do you vote by your beliefs? And uh, so I guess, to what degree do you feel that your decision-making process is autonomous? I describe, I don't know how to describe that in any simple way for myself. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know particularly. I've never, hardly ever taken a poll in my life. I guess in one or two elections I took a poll, so I, I've never been a poll operating guy. But you have some sense of where people are, and, uh, and sometimes it conflicts with what your better judgment is. How you balance those, I describe as it, uh, it operates in 435 different ways around here. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, if I expect there's everyone here who has made votes that they know are they're going to is are not the most popular in district because they thought it was important and the right thing to do. On the other hand, I expect there everyone here at times has made votes that they think this is not particularly good, but that's what the folks want back home, and it's you know not that big a deal. And and the other uh, that I always say is an important factor in this process is the explanation factor. Uh, how much time are you going to have to spend explaining some vote? And is it worth all the time and energy of explaining why you did something in contrast to casting a different vote? And I, at times, I think uh, the explanation factor has as much impact on some issues of people vote as you know whether they're following their own judgment or reacting to, to uh, uh, so what they perceive is the majority of public opinion in their district. But it blends different ways in everyone. <laughs> That's a very honest answer, the explanation factor. Um, and I just want to squeeze in one question myself here on a slightly different subject, because I had mentioned yeah. ethics, and we want yeah. to get to that. You were on the ethics committee, yes, a very over, secretive over. committee, <laughs> uh, which has been accused uh, lately, at least in the last several years, of being a somewhat toothless uh, committee, that is not really uh, doing what uh, what at least some would like to see the committee do. What is your view of how well the ethics committee does in policing the ethics of House members when when necessary? Well, in the years <laughs> I spent, I was out there for a little over four years. We had four different chairmen. Uh, in the period I was on there, we never had a vote that divided along partisan lines. We didn't have many votes, but if we did, they didn't divide by party line. Uh, you know, there are critics. I'm never quite sure what they want us to do. I was on one uh, rather difficult case. We issued a report. Uh, you know, you don't expel members. You're dealing with people, uh, members who've been elected by the people. Uh, we thought the person had some problems with what he'd done. We issued a report. And in the, in the voters in the next election changed who their representative was. That, you know, yeah, the, the, the ultimate, you know, I think it is in, in this crazy diverse world we have with all kinds of pressures going on, you need people with basic character to get elected in this place. But people in the individual districts, have, a, if they want to elect a scoundrel, they have the right to elect a scoundrel. You know, <laughs> it, it, and uh, you need two-thirds vote to expel someone. That's going to be very unusual. And uh, I think you need some general rules in this place. 
But the, the idea that you're going to go micromanage everyone so that everybody wondering, walking around wondering if they've broken some rule, that's crazy too. You know, there's some folks who I think really think we should be elected, sent here. And what do we call those big domes? Biospheres or something? You know, you put the, the people here into a biosphere so they have no contact with anybody. You know, the reality of, of governing is you deal with a hustle bustle of, of uh, all kinds of folk, folks who, who, are, who are interested in what we do. And uh, people need to have capacity to deal with those pressures. You know, and, uh, and uh, the right for people to lobby, you know, a basic constitutional right in this country is uh, the right to petition your government. And uh, people petition their government by being organized and having some people lobby for them. You know, that's... Uh, that's our, there'd be one way for there not to be anybody lobbying this place and that is for nothing to be happening. So we got to, you know, it's, the, the bigger, the more complex our society gets, the more groups are organized and more folks putting pressure on us. Makes our job more, tough, more difficult, but that's why we're elected. You, uh, you have said, and others have said as well, of others uh, who we've talked to in this project, that uh, lobbyists are not a bad thing at all, that you, they are advocates for either a point of view or uh, an industry perhaps that wants its uh, point of view to be explained. But, uh, but there is a view, certainly, that lobbyists are able to get access and have influence because of money, because of money in campaign contributions or trips or other benefits that are provided to members. And I guess the question is, um, does money influence uh, policy here? I, I, it can at times probably, but less so than some of those advocates think. Um, you know, campaigns cost money. And, uh, and people are going to raise money. And, uh, you know, it, and people have to learn to, to make that to deal with those competing pressures. Uh, uh, and that's not necessarily I mean, just simply related to lobbyists. It relates to the interest of lots of people. And, uh, you know, the, 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 there are two types of people who would not have the need for people being lobbying the place. And those are the people who, where ideology gives them all the answers to questions, or someone who's so smart they know everything. Now, I haven't found any of anybody <laughs> like that around this place. Uh, and I haven't found them out in the public. And uh, so, so if we have reporting requirements, and uh, I, you know, some of the things being talked about now, I'm not particularly a fan of. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's a, you know the, the, when it comes to trips, the fundamental problem with Congress isn't that members are traveling too much. If there's a fundamental problem, is members don't travel enough outside of their little own domain, and, and so you have we have rules in place to now, you know, that you have to report. They want quick as people want quicker reporting. Fine, uh, and uh, pre-clearance of trips that probably makes sense, but to prohibit it, uh, you know, I think it makes this place even more polarized and more insular than, than it is now. And some of the proposals are, if it's only nonprofit groups, well, it's, you know, some of the, in my judgment, it sounds like if, if you go to some place run by academics, that's good. But if you go any place where it's an association of people who actually build something or deliver a service, then it's bad because they probably have a lobbyist. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's yeah. a, you know, I just don't know how you get into all of this. Uh, and um, I think you, you got to have some, as exists now, regulation on it, some reporting of it. And, uh, you know, the, the reality is of all the abuses people talked about, uh, th uh, people are going to jail because they broke existing law. And I think some broke the spirit of the existing regulations on travel, and those have got to be enforced. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Congressman. My name is Spence. I am uh, an intern at the Brookings Institution. And uh, I wanted to address your concerns over the, uh, the shortness of the, work, of the work week for Congress. Um, 
I was wondering if you could expound on what, what does the average congressman or woman do um, when Congress is not actually in session? And how has that, would you say, changed over the years? And if you don't feel qualified to answer how, how, how it's changed for the average congressman, how has it changed for you specifically? Yeah, I don't know how to generalize. I, and it's even hard to figure out exactly how it's um, changed individually. I haven't really thought about that particularly. You know, but, but we go to fewer committee meetings here than we used to. Uh, and there are, and, and yeah, yeah, few, fewer, you know, caucuses have task force on issues. I find I go much less to those types of things than before. But part of that's also a change that happens is you have more seniority here. Uh, when, you're, when you're sort of mid-range, you have more flexibility in time. If you're a ranking member of the committee, you've got to be at the committee meeting all the time. And you got to spend lots of time visiting both staff and other people getting ready for those things. So I suppose the biggest thing, I'm not sure to the degree that where my life is different, it's because of the shorter work week. It's part of that. But also when you're, you, you have respon institutional responsibility in a particular committee, that occupies more of your time and you have some less time to do other things. <laughs> 